Welcome to this video. This will be about how to read a compressor map on a turbocharger. I'm going to pull up an image of a compressor map. Let's see what comes up here. And I'll choose, uh, how about the first one that comes up? This is actually a, a pretty good one to be reading. This is a Garrett turbocharger. Uh, Garrett and Borg Warner are two of the largest turbocharging companies and they're the, the big guys when it comes to, to building turbochargers. Uh, notice you have a mass flow rate here, pounds per minute, and a pressure ratio. And by knowing these two things about your car, which I will go over in the next video how to find out what your mass flow rate is and what your pressure ratio would be, you can find out um, exactly how this compressor is going to act in your car. And I'd like to splice in a... And I would like to splice in a video here about how uh, the compressor testing actually works. In this case, we have a compressor and it will be spun either by an electric motor or by a turbine. And the air will enter into the compressor, go into radial flow, and come out the scroll housing, as we talked about in some last videos. This scroll housing will then uh, contain a butterfly valve that they can open and close to allow flow or restrict flow as necessary. And what they do is they start with the, with the butterfly valve completely open and they will incrementally begin to close it. And they'll start measuring things like temperature, mass flow, uh, turbulence, anything that they can measure and find where the uh, compressor works well and where it does not work well. And they start to make a graph like we just saw where you have mass flow and you have pressure ratio. So they'll measure the pressure coming out here and here and anywhere. And they'll say, oh, it's twice as much pressure here with this much mass flow. And they'll start to make what you see to be a compressor map. And as this uh, incrementally closes, pressure will build up higher and higher and eventually it will slow down the compressor and when that happens pressure backs up you get a pressure drop and the compressor speeds up and then it backs up again and so it slows down and you get a, a, a some really bad shakes that can damage bearings this is called compressor surge and the surge zone is right here where it says oh man i've got all this power and nowhere to put it and so I'm going to surge, and it's a, it's a place where turbo bearings will be damaged. You don't want that in your car. Over here on this side of the islands, uh, you have the opposite problem, uh, where the compressor speeds up a lot, and efficiency goes way, way down. The temperature coming out of the air is very, very high, and high temperature, as you know from the first video, means really bad for horsepower. So this is a bad zone, too. You want to be somewhere in these islands, as I'll explain further. This is the basics of how compressors are tested and how compressor maps are made. And back to the video. So to read this, um, we can calculate the mass flow rate of our car and we can determine our pressure ratio by using this equation, where I say the boost pressure plus the atmospheric depressure divided by the atmospheric pressure. So at sea level, uh, the atm atmospheric pressure is 14.7. And let's say I'm running 15 pounds of boost well, then I'll just divide by the atmospheric pressure. And I get a roughly double the amount of atmospheric pressure. This um, isn't quite accurate. If I want to run it a little bit more accurate, I'd say I'm running 15 pounds of pressure plus whatever altitude I'm at. I'm going to assume sea level. Then I'll say, well, I'm going to lose one PSI with an intercooler and I'll lose another PSI with my air filter. And now I'll divide by my atmospheric pressure, and that will give me 1.88 times the amount of atmospheric pressure. Uh, that's a little bit more accurate. You just account for whatever pressure drops you get through your components, such as air filters and intercoolers. So with that being said, I'm gonna take a screenshot of this just so I can annotate the picture a little bit. With that being said, I'll grab my pen Make sure, yeah, blue pen's good. I'll go with actually a, a black pen. That'll stand out better. Let's say um, my turbo is completely spooled at 3,000 RPM, and I'm running 
a pressure ratio of 1.88 like we just calculated and at 3000 RPM I get 30 pounds a minute mass flow and I read let's say I calculate my mass flow at red line which I will go over in the next video and that's at 50 pounds per minute well now I since uh, I'm fully spooled at 3000 RPM my pressure ratio will remain constant so I can simply draw a line from here to here and then I say well what if the, t the turbo is spooling let's say I'm running 10 pounds a minute at idle um, I can assume a linear relationship and then when I'm fully spooled I keep a consistent pressure ratio and this is a good idea of how a compressor map would work I uh, and you can gauge how well your line fits into a compressor map. I clearly made a hand-picked example here. My engine might end up way over here into the stall zone, and that's not a very good place to be because I'll lose a ton of efficiency. So if I end up over here, I would call this an undersized compressor. If I uh, end up over here, also a bad place I'm surging, we would call that an oversized compressor. So you want to fit, you want to go from about here to about here-ish to uh, make the most of your compressor and have it fit really nicely. Again, I'm going to talk about in my next video how to read this uh, mass flow rate and um, you know how to determine pressure ratio. If this video was helpful, please subscribe. That's the best way to help me back. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.